Greetings and hello. I invited a friend of mine from Hungary to visit and hang out with me for a few days. His name is Peter and the rest of this video I will be interviewing him. The reason I'm so interested in Peter's story was he was on staff for 22 years in the CO for 20 years at the flight land base and then on that infamous prison ship free winds for a couple of years and he fled he blew in Scientology terminal I was interested in talking to Peter about then and now I was Sea Org in a much earlier generation the 70s the 80s and I left in 1990 but Peter only left 14 months ago where we to where in May 2018 he did an intercept at Tampa Airport and grabbed his wife who had just finished training to be a class 9 counselor I've never heard of someone fleeing and grabbing their wife at a, as an intercept at the airport and getting her to go Peter, one thing that Scientology Inc. is infamous for is not caring at all about the husband-wife relationship. That's right. They don't care whether you're even 3,000 miles away if you're needed and you just got married. Tough. That's right. Thursday before 2 in lunch break, we rash, uh, ran to the courthouse and we got married and I will then run back to post. You went straight back on the job? Yes. So you were married? I was a few minutes late and there was already somebody waiting for me uh, at the door. And then uh, we didn't get uh, a room right away. It took about two months to actually get a room. Yeah. With bunk beds stacked up and so was she. Yeah, we didn't separate As rooms. a married couple you couldn't get birthing. That's to right. have a private room for yourself, That's even right. though you just got married. Yeah. No honeymoon there, huh? Yeah, we were put on the waiting list. A few months later, the uh, there was a uh, an award, and we went to Orlando. So we called that as our honeymoon. So that it's not upsetting for our families that we didn't even have a honeymoon. So we just kind of uh, said that this trip to Orlando was the honeymoon, which is actually it was a pretense. Is it true that husbands and wives snitch on each other all the time? Yes. Now, it's good that you and her did, that's fine. It's called mutual rules. Yeah. When you two cover for each other. But I'm not talking about, I'm talking now, these questions are about the culture right. of Scientology. Yeah, they are supposed to put each other's ethics in. I told Heber a couple of things, my, my, my ex-husband, who was mm -hmm. president of the church, in pillow talk, literally in bed, mm -hmm. pillow talk. Yeah. And when RTC came like pugs, forcing him to write knowledge reports, he wrote what I privately told him in pillow talk. Wow, unbelievable. One, one, one silly little thing is I said I, was, I wanted to write a will. <gasps> and this was considered she wants to write a will and this was made out like you see she may be postulating death mm. <laughs> what is the underlying cause yeah. that she would want to write a will you see so there's a kind of hunted it's a hunted culture yeah you're constantly con please if somebody, if somebody would have been like that, a person would have been put on the meter right away because of uh, suicide thoughts. Your whole life is avoiding ethics yeah. and tougher ethics and tougher punishment. That's right. Talk about it. Well, the, the biggest uh, thing on this subject is uh, security because uh, we are or we were on a post and while we were on post, then there's these security guards that are at the place where we were staying and uh, basically they don't have anything to do because there's nobody there 
there's no intruders or anything like that so the only thing that gives them a little bit of something to do is going around and writing chits on people because uh, the carpet is in the wrong place or there is a bed crumb on the carpet and uh, so that's one thing they do the other thing All they... right, I don't think the global audience understands chits mm. an ethics report yeah. is written up on you for you to be summoned by an ethics officer that's right. ethics chit is our slang it wouldn't, yeah. a global audience wouldn't know that yeah. so now aren't the security guards more intrusive can't they just go through everything in your birthing and yes. confiscate go ahead they actually what they do. actually what happened to me and this this didn't just happen to me it happened to other people also that uh, they would go around and they would collect all electronic devices and check them if the person uh, went onto the internet, which is a crime in Scientology. It's a crime. It's to a go crime. On the internet. Yes. Mm -hmm. So basically, they took my uh, laptop mm -hmm. and they used criminal investigatory software to recover all the browser history that I deleted. And then after that, they reported on me that I visited all these uh, websites that I, I wasn't supposed to visit. And then I had to go to ethics and uh, I was in trouble, basically. And then I had another friend, uh, you know, he came to me and says, you know what, they took my eye, eye touch. I feel so violated. And the, the, the way they said that security reserves the right to confiscate your electronic devices. Well, what kind of rights are we to about, uh, talking about? They have no rights. Confiscate means stop, uh, gone for good. Yeah. You're never going to get it back. Well, they, they would give it back after a few weeks, actually, after they checked it. I see. And then they wrote up the report of what you did and done wrong. Mm -hmm. One thing I've described Scientology Sea Org is I've called it management by punishment that's right right come on you guys have seen these people on the rpf on a slave camp you know taking all their rights away they can't talk they can't you know they can't talk to anybody unless they've been spoken to they get terrible food they get no pay why because they had sex with someone come on you know, and I'm not even talking cheating on wives or anything. I'm just talking two single people having sex. They're going to go to the RPF. Come on, what is right about that? You know, that's something that the Nazis would do. I mean, come on. The Nazis used to imprison people that they thought were doing something wrong. And they put them in a slave camp. Well, what do you think the RPF is? Just because they have better uniforms, you think it's any different? They don't. All their rights have been, you know, all their rights have been stripped, you know. They, uh... They get what, $15 a week, $20 a week, they get what's called quarter pay, you know. They get no free time for years and years. I knew people who were on the RPF for seven years. I can even listen to their names for you, and you guys know. You guys know, you've heard people leave for, and six years later, where are they? Oh, they're still on the RPF. And then um, after that comes a long list of questions where you're asked like, well, did you ever say anything um, negative about Scientology? Did you ever um, indicate to anyone that Ellen Hubbard, you know, something bad about Ellen Hubbard? Question after question after question after question. And for each of those, it follows the same procedure. And after it's all done, you have to realize that you were deluded. That's part of the, 
They call it the end phenomena of the procedure. Um, it goes on usually for months, every day, and you're constantly looking for the evil in you. Like, why, you know? And at the end, you think they're all great people. And it was all your own evil purposes that made you deluded. You shake your head in disbelief. What is OSA doing? Why are they allowing such criminality? The church did everything to get Wikipedia to not have SB Hole up on the web. 320 protests, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, it's on the web. And when you read it, you think, what? Do we live in the medieval ages? People are locked down in prison with no, with bars on the wall, can't leave, are marched like Auschwitz prisoners, left, right, left, right, to go eat with a security guard in front and a security guard at the back. These are top executives of the church that live in a subhuman condition. Yes, I was. One time I was uh, called into a conference room and asked, some questions and he ordered his his secretary to slap me and she um, slapped me so hard I fell fell over into the chairs um, one time he uh, Mr. Miscavige ordered his communicator to break my finger if I didn't answer uh, his question 